In this Destiny 2 video, we check out some of the best weapons in the new Final Shape DLC that the actual DLC has on offer. These weapons are just my opinion, by the way. These are obviously before the day one raid drops too, and these are weapons anyone can get quite easily. How's it going, guys? My name is DPJ, and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So with their servers being mostly broke, with players waiting until the weekend to jump in, I thought I'd bring you guys a video on some of the better weapons, some of the better new weapons you can acquire without much hassle, which will help your progress uh, through this game and what's to come. So let's get into it guys, and first up we have this new amazing burst fire stasis grenade launcher called the Lost Signal. Now this is a weapon I unlocked quite early on and thought at the time that it wasn't anything special. That was until I used it. It's basically a wither horde uh, which does all kinds of madness. The lingering damage is crazy and while it's far away from the usual grenade launches in game it's great to see unique ones being added. So this is a weapon that as far as I know comes from the echo engrams only. These come from the season pass and you decrypt them in the helm at the old war table. Now you need to select the engram on the left hand side here in order to get one of these. And as far as I'm aware there's only two weapons that can drop from these engrams. A sword and this grenade launcher. So your odds of getting this are quite high. Now in regards to roles I personally wouldn't mind a strategist and wellspring or maybe even Demolitionist instead of Wellspring, but there are many, many combinations for you to use here to suit your build style. It also has a great origin trait called Radiolaria Transponder, where rapid final blows cause targets to explode into a pool of Radiolarian fluid. Pretty cool. Okay, so next up guys, we have this amazing new primary sidearm called The Core. This strand special using sidearm is utterly incredible as it shares its intrinsic frame with one other weapon that I know of in the game which was way way harder to get, a weapon known as the Indeed Kindness. Now what's special about this frame is these weapons fire self propelled rocket ammunition where projectiles explode on impact for high damage and that's exactly what they do, crazy high damage. Now I've been unlucky with my rolls, I'm trying to get those red borders to be able to craft the ultimate version, but the one you'd 100% want to have is one with beacon rounds on it and probably hatchling. This would work amazingly well with strand builds, but also work amazing with that prismatic too. It's intrinsic, the dealer's choice is also decent at the same time. Now to get this weapon it comes mainly from those pale heart engrams, which to be honest are quite easy to get get i mean just run around on the pale heart complete the uh overthrow and just pick up random chests you'll get plenty of these leveling up goals too also gives you more opportunity to get these weapons now you can obviously focus these weapons uh, at Ghost within the Lost City, so yeah, keep an eye on that too. So yeah, it really isn't a hard weapon to get, it's just a perfect role might be. So we gotta grind this one out people, but it's definitely worth it. Okay, so next up guys, we have two new hand cannons to the game, we have the Bold Endings and the Mahir's HC4. We'll start with the Bold Endings, this thing is utterly brutal. These two hand cannons are what I will state are part of a family of I believe like four hand cannons in the game, maybe even less, that are burst hand cannons. Two round burst hand cannons. And they actually feel to me a lot like sidearms, but hey. Now the other one in the game which is an older weapon is called the Warden's Law. Uh, I think that may be it, so there's three in total. If I'm wrong, let me know down below. So yes, again, firstly we have the bold endings so this is a stasis hand cannon i've used quite a lot not even having the greatest role either it is though a simple enough weapon to get again the pale heart engrams uh, and ghosts within the last city stock this weapon in fact i ain't far off being able to craft this thing as this is a weapon i keep picking from mika 10 uh, along his quest line and get to pick many many weapons i just kept choosing this and i kept getting red borders of it i think i need one more red border to be able to craft this thing now in regards to roles the one i am personally interested in trying out is headstone and dragonfly these could completely go against each other and not work at all but i'm really curious to see the outcome of them other perks are here in plenty, I mean we have uh, Eyeless Storm, Rapid Hit to name a few. 
Okay, so the other two bursts hand cannon is a void weapon called the Mahis HC4. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Now this one, as far as I'm aware, is a random world drop. And I've only had a couple of them, both dropping for me while playing the Final Shape campaign. Now this is a weapon that can behold a role I must get my hands on, one with repulsive brace and destabilizing rounds. This goes toe to toe in my void build and would work wonders even with my void hunter prismatic build. I need this in my life. But I actually feel this may be the hardest one to get from this list people. As again, I've only had it drop from the campaign, but I have read it's a world drop. So if you have one of these with that perfect role for me of destabilizing rounds, and that repulsive brace, let me know in the comments section so I can block ya. Only joking. Okay, so lastly guys are two exotics tied to quest lines, which I've already made complete guides on. I will link the guides in the video description if you want to get these weapons. So first up guys, we have the Ergo Sum. This special ammo secondary exotic sword is utterly unreal and unique. What's special about this is the fact its main exotic perk can be something of other exotic weapons, weapons such as the Polaris Lance, the Cloud Strike, the Galahorn and more. This thing's nuts and you're seeing what this can drop with on screen now. There are 8 in total and I need to collect all of them. Now what's also great about this new exotic sword is the fact you can farm it multiple times, unlimited times for that matter as far as my understanding takes me. Now there are a couple of ways you can do this, the first way is to do the Pale Hearts very own Pathfinder, bridge your way across this doing those requirements and it gives you a couple of these swords. Now what I will say is, make sure you go and do the Ergo Sum uh, quest line before completing this Pathfinder and claiming those rewards, because if you complete this Pathfinder without doing a quest, you claim these rewards, you will lose a chance of getting this sword from this Pathfinder, so do the quest first people. Another way to get this is to do the overthrows and complete them. That's all four levels. So if you're within the Pale Heart Director and that Ergo Sum is stated as a reward, get to doing it people. It can drop this sword with a random roll. Okay, so lastly guys, we have the Steel Hunt Exotic Sniper Rifle. Again guys, I have done a complete guide on this weapon and how it's obtained. It's quite easy too. So the Steel Hunt is a sniper rifle, which if you do not know, it basically gives you the Golden Gun Super from the Hunter. No matter what subclass or what class you are using in general, Titan, Warlock, it doesn't matter, you can have this and basically use a Golden Gun and use it alongside any other subclass and always have it there too at the same time. So how this basically works is you get headshots with a weapon or you collect orbs with this weapon. It builds up a super bar. Uh, when that super bar is full, you hold the reload button. You'll trigger the golden gun. You'll have a short, well, you'll have a timer. It's not too short to be honest, where you can fire three shots at the golden gun. It's utterly unreal. This will go toe in toe with many, many builds out there. And what's also great about this is you can build up this mini super bar, switch to your other weapon and come back to this sniper and use that golden gun feature on it whenever you want. Once you build up that bar, it doesn't disappear until you trigger it. Pretty cool. What's crazy about this even further is if you play on a hunter and you use the Celestial Nighthawk exotic helmet, you can basically combine these three shots you'll get from this, uh, this sniper rifle into one super powerful shot. Basically what the Celestial Nighthawk does for the Golden Gun uh, Super will do for this exotic sniper too and it makes it unbelievable. And this can be used again with any other subclass. Prismatic, Arc, Strand, Stasis, Void, it doesn't matter guys. Ponder the Celestial Nighthawk, use this sniper. You can use this super from this golden gun sniper rifle alongside any other super you may be using at the same time. It's unreal guys. So yes, the Steel Hunt is a great, great exotic weapon. You need to get your hands on. And there we have it guys for another Destiny 2 video and weapons I think you should be trying to get. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one. We all on YouTube every damn day, watching these vids of the brand new games. Vid after vid, many of y'all the same, that's why you gotta go and find DPJ. Destiny gameplays, weekly snipes, heavy uploads gonna have you a hype. Started in the UK, now he's worldwide. DPJ, go and subscribe.